Hey folks, and welcome back here at Gatekeeper Media as we continue to bring you coverage of the Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship out in Charlotte, North Carolina. We're at Nevin Park and we're with our back nine here for our opening round. And we appreciate you all for tuning in with a special thank you going out to all the Patreon supporters who helped make this coverage possible. My name is Dustin Murray and joining me as always is Nathan Queen. How's it going, sir? Doing great. I've enjoyed watching these wooded fairways on this front nine. We're going to continue that here on the back nine. As you see those wooded fairways bringing in some bogeys for our players here. Yeah, it's certainly been a tough start, but Nicholas Antela is at one under par, which has basically got him in a tie for fifth. But again, all that matters is getting above that cut line. You need to be one of the top four scores to progress to tomorrow. It's one round, one shot to make it to the next set of the bracket as we get into hole 10. Yeah, what I guess you would describe as the gauntlet hole out here at Nevin, 406 foot straight. It's slightly uphill, about seven feet, and the fairway is 12 to 15 foot wide pretty much the entire way. Yeah, this hole essentially requires perfection to be able to birdie. Or maybe a bit of luck. I mean, just yeah, look at that. See, it's so intimidating. I don't see luck really getting you there. I mean, maybe if you get like a soft kiss, that's pretty lucky to stay in the fairway. He's going to have an opportunity. You got to do some par. zigzag bouncing. You know what I mean? Like you got to just, you know, like slalom bouncing off of trees. You know what I mean? Yeah. I could honestly, I could see... Some people just taking a mid-range and try to stay in the middle here instead of attacking. It's probably going to play more like 440. Yeah, it feels like one of those holes you could definitely game plan for playing for par, but you might throw that game plan out the window if you're midway through your round and you feel like you're too far behind the pack on where you need to be to move on. Right, there's a couple different mindsets you could take there. You can see the basket here, so get aggressive. Try to get back a little bit, but also knowing you're probably not going to see some birdies. You could get your par and try to get the birdies where they come. But plus two, I so believe I'd be made going the most also. progress of anyone and doesn't hit anything for a long time. Come on, bro. Yeah, gonna end up inside circle two, possibly maybe just outside. Faster disc in Brody's hand, so he's looking to attack the green. So nearly, just a slight overturn. This is the normal tee, actually, for the hole. <laughs> if you weren't playing the Pro Tour Championships, this is where you'd be playing. Right. There's a few that are definitely longer than normal. Made a couple changes out here. Nicholas just wanted to play both of them, get a feel. <laughs> Imagine if that was the drop zone if you don't stay in the fairway. <laughs> yeah, if this was lined with OB everywhere. Yeah. As it basically is, we'll see if Emerson's somehow able to escape that OB, uh, but he does not. It's going to be difficult to say bogey from where he's at now. This is just the fairway of your nightmares, I feel like. And getting off of it just further takes you down into the depths. And does... Wow. Lots of speed on it. Actually does get up to right around Circle's Edge. Going to have an opportunity for the bogey. But him... And Brody here as well. Got to feel like they're starting to slip away a bit from being able to move on to the next day. Yeah, I think at this point in time, the leading score was four under par, and there was multiple people kind of at three and two under par. So you're definitely about four strokes off the pace right now if you're Emerson and Brody Smith. Another long bid. Top from Greg and knows, <laughs> knows he didn't get it out of the hand. I mean, just the immediate distaste for it. 
And it's going to be a double for Emerson here. Yeah, and that's going to take him out of it I'll, pretty much. Um, you've got other players already in that. You were saying three to four under range, and he's going to be at plus three now. He'd have Eight to birdie holes. out. Yeah, and even birdieing out isn't going to guarantee anything for him. Yeah, certainly Niklas is in the best position at one under par. And Greg keeps hanging in there, saving those sure. pars. But definitely. Still nice. Yeah, definitely need to get some birdies on the card. Gonna have a chance here on hole 11, but pretty tricky. Got eight foot, maybe seven foot wide gap to start. Only 202 feet, but... Oh Don't my. throw it 204 feet. You will be 40 feet down a hill and feel like you're about 70 feet away from the basket pitching up for a par. Yeah, that's that cliff that <laughs> Wiley Coyote always finds himself on the edge of right there. That thing is way down there if you fall off of it. Yeah, and that's kind of the miss you want. As he, That hung on, I think. Maybe. You know, I mean, it might fall by the time they get there. <laughs> that is true. Gravity may come into play <laughs> in these next uh, next 45 seconds or so. We'll see. But it looked like he hung on to the edge of the, the hill there. Oh, boy. And Yeah, before that shot, I was going to say you don't want to be the 30-foot short mistake because then you feel like you almost need to lay up for a par from inside the circle or just outside, and that's no fun. But you really don't want to miss this gap then you pretty much have to try the shot again. And that was actually Brody flicking his putting putter. So I don't, I don't know. I just guess faded he, way more than he thought it would. I feel yeah, like, well, this one, it moves. This hole does move off to the left. I guess with the forehand, you can look at the gap the whole time. Yeah. I thought he would use maybe one of his like more beat up approach discs that he usually uses for flicks, but yeah, he used a putting putter there and didn't get what he needed as Barsby also in a very tricky position. What a shot. Oh man, I bet you he wishes he could have just done that off the tee. Just a scuba approach here for Brody. Likes to do that to make sure it has a little movement once it hits the ground and accomplishes that goal. Is he running this? He looks to be trying to line it up here. Feels like you have to with where his score is. But that is the consequence you pay. Gonna have that score going higher. And but yeah, like you said, he's kind of has to, he has to make all of these if he wants to move on. Knows that that may sacrifice and bounce yeah. that score up but at this point that high score doesn't matter anymore you're not yeah it's one of those it. situations where like any other tournament you lay up and live to play another day or another hole but you just don't have that luxury in this bracket system and yeah nicholas holds on <laughs> let's Whoa. see if those shoes are gonna hold on that's a steep slope he's standing on floats it in there two under par and he's now tied for four so he's above that cut line Still a lot of holes left to play, though, to hold on to that. Yeah, and pending his seed as well. So he's got to be in solo fourth if somebody has a lower seed than him. That would kick him out as well. No playoffs. Brody grabs the par. Yeah, and that's kind of putting him in that not going to make it category at this point. He was a stroke ahead of Emerson before this hole, but still needed kind of that birdie out mode. Not quite going to make it. Moving into hole 12, 346 foot par 3. You've got the gap this drone's flying down now where it does bend slightly to the right, but a straight shot. If you throw a straight shot 350, you're most likely going to be inside the circle on that left side. There's a right gap also. It's skinnier, but it leads straight to the basket as well. Yeah, I'd be kind of surprised to see anyone take it. 
as this is certainly a little bit more inviting, but Antala getting caught up early there on the left-hand side. And not necessarily in the event, but I do know a few players that do, a few good players that prefer that right side just because of the angle they can attack it off of the tee. Ooh, this is looking great from Greg. Skipping in the circle one. Well done. Oh, yeah. Going to give him an opportunity to get under par now. And Brody just hopes to follow that same line, really. And slightly overturned. Just a hair. And that's how this course is. You can't even be an inch or two off. And, yeah, just like that, about a disc's width off of the fairway. Uh, luckily does get that kick back towards the fairway, so could have an opportunity to save. And Niklas hoping to save par. That's the best he can hope for here, and that would still keep him in position. And that will do just a drop in to keep him at two under par. Love that. Emerson, yeah, Emerson able to throw a good, nice touch shot as well. That backhand turnover. Brody a little bit shorter distance, also showing some good touch. Going to be inside 25. Greg getting personal with this tree to be able to fit this putt in. And misses. Not what you expect at all from that range. Yeah. But like you were saying, that tree kind of close on him, not able to really use his legs like he wanted to. And that can throw your timing off. Look like he was just a little late release, not getting the leg pop. As Emerson tapping in a par there, but again, seems like he's kind of out of the picture at this point. Third easiest hole on the course with no bogeys today. If disc golf is your game, make Gotta Go, Gotta Throw your disc golf warehouse. With a huge selection of discs, bags, baskets, carts, shirts, and more, GottaGoGottaThrow.com has all the tools to take your game to the next level. Shop online or our Golden Valley, Minnesota store. Free shipping with all online orders over $75. Online or in-store, get what you need for the game you love. GottaGoGottaThrow.com, your disc golf warehouse. In the game since 1993. Moving into hole 13, 410 feet, up 27 feet, and the gap you've got to hit to start is only about 9 feet wide. It does get wider the entire way, but another 440, 450 foot playing hole that you've got to hit a very tight gap on. It, it almost feels very reminiscent of hole 10. Just how tight it is all the way down. Right. It does. The The initial gap is probably about the same, maybe a little tighter. But the rest of the fairway just kind of does funnel out and get a little bit wider. So once you hit that initial gap, you have a little more room to move around. But it is a, a decent amount more uphill. So you've got to get that nose up. This can fight out. This will be great for Barsby. And indeed it does. Get some skips. I believe it's just outside circle one. Yeah, fantastic shot. Do or die time for Brody. Needs to birdie out to have any hope at this point. That does not look like a birdie. Uh, it's pin high, but it's well in the rough. 
or close to pin high at least, but that's going to be a long one. And Emerson at this point just looking for some highlights, probably trying to ace everything, going to be throwing real hard. Here we go. That's a great shot. Man, this whole place so far. I just I wonder how many people actually got the circle one off the tee. It couldn't have been. I don't think. No, no one. No one got zero, circle one regulation. Yeah, zero percent. That, that is that was kind of my my guess. And as it should be, this hole just incredibly far for how much touch you have to put off of the tee. It's really hard to rip into it when you've got to hit that such a tight gap. Deep in circle two here, Miss and Kith with the stepper. Just a little low on line. Yeah, and, and now then they the raised the basket He's already on had me. a big putt today from 75 feet. This is a bit shorter. And he's done it again. Count it. The only two on the day. Greg Barsby. Getting under par, fighting back after that last hole. Really wanted that putt. Able to can this one on hole 13 for the lone birdie. You feel like that birdie basically saved his chance at getting into tomorrow. It's still not there yet, but at least it's kept him in the hunt. It does. It's starting to get to that point. Need everyone that's a possibility, and even though this one's hard off of the tee, he gave himself that chance. It would have capitalized, see if he can do it again on the next one. Which is hole 14, 366 feet. You've got the line the drone is flying down, which is going to be a right-handed backhand flex shot or a little bit of a hyzer stand up to slow drift. There's also a left gap you can play a forehand down. It's a little skinnier, but if you hit it down the middle, there are no trees that come into play late. Personally, I think the right side is better. Oh, oh that, boy. That's a hard, rough bounce to left side of the tree into left rough. Uh, ah, that's a, I don't know what he's going to have from there. Uh, we are going to see Nicholas Antela. He loves to throw this mid-range. Probably MD3. And what a shape. Yeah, great shape. Maybe a little bit high. But misses all of the branches. Going to end up right around Circle's Edge. The precise path he needed to get himself a chance at another birdie and keep him chasing after a spot into the next stage. And just didn't get the stand-up he wanted on that. I, bu I believe he released it in the right spot. Was expecting it to turn over to the right, though. Still misses everything. May have a circle two look. Yeah, he's pinned high, and you're right. He probably is midway into circle two, maybe on the edge of it. So we'll still have a slight look. Oh. And that... Very early hit there for Keith. Yeah, it's got to be a bit of a fight trying to get through these rounds now. Once you're already at this point, it's um, just kind of going through the motions. Great second shot, though. He's actually probably going to save par. In fact, yeah, he is definitely going to. What a scramble. What a scramble and what a roll. Just need a little potatoes to go with it. What I mean, I don't know what Barsby can even do from here. This looks treacherous. Tries the overhand. It's not going to be much better here, oh, if not man. worse. And that tree kick there. We were just talking about how that last putt's going to give him a chance. And I believe this next hole is going to completely take that away immediately right now. Um, 
He's already throwing, I believe this is for double bogey. Yes, I think you're correct. So likely taking a triple here. And that's going to put him out of it. He's done. He's not, he's not going to move on. Barring just ridiculous amounts of bogeys from everybody else. Yeah, I believe you were starting to see some other players here. I mean, Nicholas is about to is about to probably go three under par if you can hit the circle one putt, and we'll see where he stands after that. No! Top band! Oh, man. Oh, so framed up for him there. You got to wonder if some of those putts he was missing down the stretch against Gannon still kind of is in the back of his head as... Normally, you feel like he hits those, but the pressure may be getting to him a bit. And this is not a good hole to be feeling pressure on. Hole 15, typically a par 5, uh, just besides the Tour Championship layout that we're in now. Um, but you've got uphill about 40 feet, a very strong left turn off of the tee. It's very much about placement here. And, and Nicholas has put himself is behind a tree, but can scramble out probably. Yeah, I think he's a little too far left to really be in a great position to attack the green, but it is it probably possible with a forehand. And that was just too turned over out of the hand. Gonna have a big backhand flex shot. But with how uphill this is, still gonna be pretty difficult to reach. Better angle for Keith. But gonna get caught up there. Still bounces onto the fairway. <laughs> Sparsby kind of getting brutalize on the previous hole look then try to bounce back here on 15 oh, yeah. perfect shot wow knew the angle for sure trusted that disc yeah that's an absolutely perfect tee shot brody's probably got 380 with another 20 feet of uphill to the pin from here so trying to reach that with a standstill going to be difficult Ends up over on the left side. I still can't get over Greg's shot, man. There's such a fine line between overturned and perfect amount of Anheuser, and he found that line as Emerson Keith throwing a pretty solid second shot. Yeah, he's probably in that 370 or so. Nikolaus probably about 360 right here. Still with a bunch of uphill left. And gets a good move on it. Yes, he does. That is in circle two for a look at birdie. As I was saying earlier, I was trying to, that at this point, some of the people that are kind of finishing up are kind of at that five and six under range already. So that's yeah. kind of the pace that Nicholas needs to hit these next few holes to jump him up into that fourth position. <clears throat> Brody able to, yeah, able to get out up and down inside the circle now looking for a par. Greg definitely want to give that more of a bid than it wound up being. Yeah, after that great tee shot that he had, I'm sure he was looking to have a better birdie opportunity. Stepper coming up short there for Emerson Keith, so we'll be settling for par. And this is a big putt for Nicholas. And he drains it. What a strike. Right in the center. Much tougher putt than the previous hole, but clutches it up. Yeah, knows he absolutely needed it after missing that previous putt. Going to put him at three down now. Still on a fight to get in those top four spots. And you can just see some of these other players are just kind of just trying to get the round done. Yeah, dejection. 
you can you can tell that they realize as well their season on the Disc Golf Pro Tour is over after these next three holes, which we will see after a short break. Great Lakes Disc, located in Grand Rapids, Michigan, is a fully stocked retail disc golf store that fulfills all of your disc golf needs. We carry all of the major manufacturers, accessories, and offer player and event sponsorship, along with tournament payout assistance. To learn more about Great Lakes Disc, visit greatlakesdisc.com. They're all playing these Disc Golf Pro Tour events to gather points to eventually make it to the Tour Championship. Very quickly, players are seeing it as now one of the main reasons they're on the road full time. If you're a Tour Champion now, that's a big deal. Moving into hole 16, one of the easier holes on the course, 640 feet. Got about 240 feet to that tree you saw in the middle of the fairway where it goes slightly up just inside or just outside of that and carrying another 50 60 feet is going to put you in a fine position but it is possible to get about 350 feet or so if you go with a flex forehand perfect line once again from antala as he was so consistent at usdgc i think every round was basically within a stroke or two of each other he was just really going strong there Barsby. Good shot here. Looking like it's going to make some great progress up the fairway. Rolls out to a good spot, too. Oh, yeah. Definitely a nice little rollout. Still would have been reachable from that left side, but most likely would have, would have had to go forehand. Now he's going to be able to have whatever option he likes as Brody catching early left. Going to put him in a pretty tough position as you see how thick it is over on the right side. Emerson scrambling out of the rough and making some good forward progress along the way. Brody hoping to do the same in a similar precarious position. Yeah. Fought through. <laughs> Ends up on the fairway. And Greg still going with that turnover sidearm, making sure he's able to land his disc flat. Slides up there inside the circle. Antala catching a bit of cabbage there on the edge of the fairway, but still finding himself in circle one. Well played hole so far from Niklas. Yeah, gets he's really away. turned it on, man. Yeah, he got away with a little bit right there, but he definitely is trying to turn it on. Looking for his second birdie of the last three holes and third birdie opportunity. He's had such a great finish of the season so far, man. A couple of top ten finishes leading up to USDGC. Takes second there and has really kept his composure throughout this round after taking a couple of licks early. Is Emerson still just kind of going through the motions, making some odd mistakes you wouldn't typically make, but it's, you know, you can't really blame him. Hard to stay focused whenever you're out there just to finish. Smith also taking the par here, keeping himself at three over with just a couple of holes left to play. And again, Niklas in fifth right now. Big putt here. And drains another back-to-back -back birdies to put him in a tie for fourth position. So he's right there. Needs to finish out these last two holes strong. Yeah, wants to get out of those ties for sure as he's got another card behind him. It's going to have lower seating than himself. Not going to have to worry about his card anymore. But those four players behind him, if they tie him, are going to have that tie break. Moving into hole 17. What's this, uh, the sky? 
Oh, yeah. My, my, <laughs> my notes for this whole actually say open with a question mark because, you know, it's not necessarily an open tee shot, but it is the most open that you've seen on this course the entire time. Um, kind of a pushing hyzer shot. You want it to stand up straight. You don't really want it to turn over right. Carry about 350 feet and you pass the women's tee pad. And then carry down this hill. That's exactly where you want to land at right there. You're looking at that free entrance into the woods. Got himself on flat ground as well for that better footing. As that's too much height there from Barsby. Going to get caught up. And he's right on the FPO tee pad, it looks like. Yeah, could have some awkward footing. Looks like he may be just in front of it, right around those cinders. Brody, nice hyzer flip here. Just catches the left side. Does stay in bounds, though. Turning over right a little bit, but catches some leaves and able to fade back. Going to have a little bit of a downhill run up, but not in too bad of a position. Look at Barsby sliding the forehand through there up into that wooded fairway. Again, this is a par 5, so with the distance that it is, again, if you can just make sure you stay on the fairway, chip away at it, you should be able to have an opportunity at the end. Yeah, there is a small opportunity for the eagle here. If you can land in the right spot off of the tee. Brody's going for this gap up here on the left side. What a, what skip was that? Are you kidding me? Thing had the hang time of an NFL punter. That gap turns into pretty much nothing at the end of it, but he was able to punch through that nothing, and he's going to be down there in easy birdie position just about not much left for him to pitch up and down through the nothing just like metallica man here we go second shot here for nicholas antela so i feel like and i keep messing up it's niklas but i keep saying nicholas so i do apologize for that And he has gotten down there to maybe have that small eagle opportunity. Got that a little bit higher than he wanted to, I think. So not quite able to push that full distance, but maybe circle two's edge now. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and also, nice I little... just realized, I know this is late, Nathan, I'm sorry, but... It, it was through the never. I, I don't know what I was doing there. I'm sorry. I was going to let it slide. Thing. Yeah, I, I couldn't let it slide and still be considered a rock fan. So I had to go back. See a lot of these little choppy forehands on this hole so far. Trying to get up and around the corner. We finally get to Niklas. Gonna try to give this a long Jump approach game. here for Antler to try to give himself a birdie chance. Okay. Count the birdie. Yeah, it's hard to tell. It seemed more like a layup play than me, but maybe he was trying to give it a soft bid. Nice putt there from Keith. Going to get a birdie here on 17. Give him a little bit of something to celebrate, I suppose. Yeah. Same for Smith. Yeah, as we did have, <clears throat> excuse me, we did have eight birdies and one eagle. Alden Harris able to connect for the three on this one today. And speaking of going backwards, I meant to shout out Garrett Gerthy earlier on hole 10 for the lone two. Able wow. to get the gauntlet. As Niklas 
Cards the Turkey moves himself to five down and inside that top four qualifying position now, moving into hole 18, 875 foot par four, the most open yet the hardest hole on the course. Really? Yeah, there's just not a great way to birdie this one. This tee shot really plays a lot farther than you think. 450, 500 feet of power to really get around that corner. And then you're still a roller, a backhand roller shot away, distance roller shot away from reaching this green. Yeah, I guess I just assumed that it wouldn't be that hard to par, and that would kind of help it score as a little bit easier compared to some of the scrambling you have to do in the woods, but fair enough. Yeah, there is nine bogey strokes or above. Okay, then. That is a high hyzer from Brody Smith. That is way up there. Yeah, and this is most likely... Oh, he does make it all the way up there. That is in a great position. I thought that was going to be left. Yeah, Brody does throw pretty darn far. That is definitely one of the things he has developed pretty quickly. And just, what is this, his second full season on tour? So... Emerson getting a nice rip out there as well. Going to be up there close to that gap. And that gap, that low ceiling is really part of what makes this hole difficult to get the birdie on. You can't really get the height that you want for the air shot to get your disc all the way there. And that indeed is going to find OB... Not really the way that Barsby was looking to end the day. Going for Roller to try to salvage something. There it is. He liked it. We'll see what his result is. As Niklas probably going to try the air shot here. Doesn't want to get too aggressive and maybe roll it out of bounds. Or isn't going to secure him a spot yet as he does have players behind him but it does put him in a good position in front and put pressure on those last four players. And he is definitely one of those guys that knows the limits of his game. And you can kind of see it even at USCGC when he elected to kind of always play the birdie on hole 10. You know, he has a game plan and he sticks to it and doesn't really try to force anything. Big shot there. Yeah, Emerson getting himself up to circle's edge. Going to have an opportunity for a rare birdie on hole 18. Brody going forehand. Oh. You got to wonder what that would have looked like if it doesn't catch those branches. It might have gotten him into like a reasonable circle two range. Oh, and Greg was a sarcastic liking of the roller as he caught that tree right there in the gap. And that pushed pretty far right. I don't know if it made it to the OB or not. Brody trying to finish his season with a scuba salute. Oh, great. I mean, just didn't really have a chance. No, that seems pretty far for a scuba to me. I it is. That, the... is. that is a very <laughs> far scuba throw, yes. I'm not an expert either, but usually not pumping them that far. Like that. Oh, and what is Barsby doing? <laughs> <laughs> Gonna end his season. What would that be? That's not even a chicken wing. I don't know that's what you a, would call that throw. I've never seen a throw. A, I've never seen that. Bridesmaid flower toss. I don't really know what you call that, but it's a good that's one. what it looked like to me. It's a backwards grenade. I, I don't. Whatever. It was fun. As Emerson trying to. Make one last putt for Birdie to finish out back-to-back. -back. Not quite able to connect. Or on the comebacker. Not going to be the way he wants to finish, but really doesn't matter at this point as Greg's throwing over top of his head backwards. <laughs> these, <laughs> these guys are trying to have a good time finishing out their season. 
solid to make it into these qualifying spots. There's a lot of players you would expect to be here that are not. Yeah. So kudos to these guys for being here. And some solid guaranteed cash, too, as well, for getting to this spot. So at least getting a little bit of something on your way out the season. Brody will finish with the par putt. Pretty solid second season on tour. Yeah, I agree. As Niklas looking to just get this par and likely put him into the next day. As that turkey was just incredibly clutched down the final stretch here at Nevin. And clutch it was. Four birdies out of the last five to put him in that fourth and final qualifying spot. Five down on the round. I believe he only had one hole that was over par. I mean, he played very clean golf, and he is rewarded, as you can see here on our leaderboard. He will be one of the four moving on into the quarterfinals. And we appreciate all of you so much for tuning into our coverage here of the Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship. Again, a special thank you going out to our Patreon supporters who helped make the coverage possible. Again, I am Dustin Murray, and with me was Nathan Queen, and we'll see you back here at Gatekeeper for the next stage of the Pro Tour Championship. We'll see you guys out there. <laughs>